Hey, what's up, folks? Hi. We are, we're back again. <laughs> Sly, Kate. So what's up? As much as a 15-year-old can be up to. <laughs> <laughs> so you had quite the weekend, my dear. I did. I did. Always busy. Band played. Yes, they did. did the Long Beach Battle of the Bands. Yeah, which we had Joanne on the last show. That's we told right. you all about. I hope mm. you checked it out. It was really cool. So what, so tell me about it. Tell me what it, tell me what it was about. What was the cause again? Let's recap. The cause was for um, raising awareness for um, music education and the arts programs in schools that are being cut. So if you want to learn more about that, I encourage you to go follow Jaybird on Facebook or any of her other websites. Look up Battle of the Bands and see how you can donate and contribute to that great cause. Yeah, you know, I, like I said last week, is that nine times out of ten, when you when programs get cut in the school system because of budgetary concerns, it's usually due to um, it's usually the music programs are the first to go. So that's the saddest part. Yeah, because without music, your boy Sly would probably be somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow. tomorrow. What's, go what's going on with you tomorrow? Tomorrow we have something called Live at Five in Patchogue, and it is going to be great. Basically what it is, they close off the entire street in Main Street, and um, obviously it's at 5 o'clock. My band goes on 5 to 6 for an hour set, and they close down the entire streets. All the restaurants are flipped outside, so you can eat outside and dine while you are watching great music. <laughs> Um, it's on 70 Main Street, and it's in front of the and it's in front of the Brick House Bre Brew Brewery. Brewery. Yep. That's never gonna that's never gonna sound right. But <laughs> um, I encourage you to come. My band is great. You will see them in a little bit later, and I'm excited. Yeah, it should be good. I mean, there's there's food, there's vendors, there's a lot of different um, there's a lot of arts and crafts, and you know, believe it or not, pretty close to probably 6,000 people descend upon Main Street. It's, it's a great family event, so I encourage you to bring your kids, but just not to the bars. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere else but the bars. No, you know, you, you, know you, you, ever, you, ever do the, you ever go into the city and do this Feast of uh, San Gennaro? No. The, 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 in Little Italy, they basically block off the street, and there's like lots of food. I wouldn't know anything about eating a lot of food <laughs> in the city because <laughs> I'm so stealth. <laughs> I'm saying. But it's a great thing. There's a ton of food. There's, did I say there was a ton of food? There's, food there's, uh, food uh, is the main attraction. Food, food, is, food and music. You got me. I'm in. But um, Moving along. No, I'm sorry. Was, anyway, so coming up, we've got some great stuff happening at Rock and Roll University. Uh, on the, on uh, August 3rd, the Personality, which is our 8 to 12 year old rock band, is opening up for the for patent pending at the revolution in amityville which is a great show uh patent pending is a local i don't know if you know patent pending is a local band that made good went national and uh they were gracious enough to have us i'll check open. them up i'll it's, check them out it's gonna be great. Sound great doors at four o'clock oh i'm sorry my bad doors are at at five o'clock show starts at six that's what it Bad copy, slut. Anyway. <laughs> also on a Sunday, August 10th, is the national holiday of, as I mentioned last show, Sly's birthday. What? What? Sly's birthday. What? Thank national you. holiday. Thank you. Thank you. Sly's birthday. Sly's <laughs> birthday. Yes, folks. There are only three weeks left to get your ticket, to get something for Sly. Mom. You just lost your head. I just, I did. Oh, uh, you going This is like a Tom Cruise, this is a Tom Cruise moment where I get to jump on the couch. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Oprah. Also, <laughs> also, it's the Rock and Roll University car show at St. Patrick's Church in Smithtown from 11 to 4 p.m. Um, if you want your car washed, please come to the car wash. <laughs> I encourage. No, it's cl classic cars, stuff, you know, from like, you know, 1950 cars from the 50s, muscle cars, the 1970s, like Firebirds and things like that. And there's going to be, did I mention there's going to be food at this thing? You see, I, see the, I see a common denominator. <laughs> this, is, this is the whole mantra food of the Food brings everyone the show. together. That's right, food in my house. <laughs> <laughs> there's only the quick and the dead in my house. My fridge is my favorite place. There we go. There we go. It's going to be great. I, I encourage you guys to come out, check out the band's, 
are killing every single band in Rock and Roll University is going to play that day, I hope. <laughs> but, but seriously, this, this is what we're about. We try to put the bands out there. They go in the rehearsal rooms. They do their thing with their teachers. Once they get good enough, we, put, we slam them in a band against their will, kicking and screaming, and they play loud rock and roll music until their neighbors move away. And it's a beautiful thing. And you're going to see some of that. Some of our students. Kate goes to the school too, which is a great thing. Killing it. It's a beautiful thing. It is. So. Next on the show, we have Tommy Marr coming up. One of my dear friends for a very long time. I love and his haircut. I do too. I, I, I wish I had that hair. I just don't. Me too. Don't talk about hair. <laughs> <laughs> but I will be interviewing when we come back after this break. We'll be right back, folks. And uh, we're going to be, <laughs> everybody scramble, <laughs> everybody run. <laughs> uh, so anyway, hey, we're killing time. How are we doing it? <laughs> we'll be right back with Tommy Marr. <laughs> I'm here for Multimedicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multimedicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff who treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain. We treat carpal tunnel. We treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls. We treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We've been here for over we 15 years. We do a vast years. array of diagnostic testing from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is. Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching doing it to help her with her pain. Vicki is also a patient here at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Vicki is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy, please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516-334-7000 or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com. I'm Erica Conway and you're watching MadhouseTV.com.
Welcome back to Rocky with Kate and Sly. I'm Kate, as you should know by now. This is Sly, and we have now a third addition to the couch, my friend Tommy Marr. How are you, Katie? Sly. What's up, man? <laughs> All right. I feel so left out. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I have a couple questions for you today, if you're willing to answer me. I'm an open book. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> so first, I want to know the basics. How long have you been a musician? Um, since the seventh grade. Seventh grade? Yes. And how did that start? Did you just a hear bunch a band? Of, a bunch of, no, well, we, we were all into music. You know, it was the early, early 60s early 60s and um, you know everybody was jumping in bands and uh, my first band was called the tribe the tribe the tribe and the first song that I ever did was hey there little red riding hood if only I knew it I could tell you how great it was <laughs> he knows it <laughs> hey little red riding hood and, and yeah it was, it was a bunch of them that. have you always had a career in music or no. have you done different things no no or? no I uh, I raised my two daughters that's always alone. a job Wow. since they were two and four and uh, I had a big construction business in Manhattan okay. and uh, I did that for 40 years and I uh, had to put everything on the burner as I got raised my two daughters and yeah. uh, and then I, I picked it up a little later in life again are you glad that you picked it up oh god yeah god it's, it's I you breathe. just can't truly breathe. leave music I, it's you gotta it's, always come back it's to everything it. it's everything out of your entire years of playing music What's your most exciting moment that you've had? Meeting someone, playing a show? It's a um, tough one, I know. I've met so many I, big yeah. ones. I mean, I've really met a lot of big ones. And, uh, but I, I would have to say my greatest, well, I have a couple. Uh, Give me a couple. Sitting, uh, sitting down with Jimi Hendrix for four hours one night, just me and him, was a wow. big, wow. big, big really? thing. Me, just me and him at a table talking for four hours. In the city? You're yeah, in a generation which later later he bought and became Electric Ladyland. It's still Electric Ladyland. Yeah, yeah. It's called called The Generation. Wow. And uh, that was a big moment. But I, I would have to say, uh, overall, uh, being at Woodstock was probably the greatest thing. I, It's still with me every day. Did every you meet Jimmy before life. Woodstock or after? Before. Wow. Before. Wow. He almost didn't do. Woodstock. I met Jimmy in 67. I'm an old buzzing. No, <laughs> but you look good. The hair. Hey, whatever it is. I told you guys talking about the hair. Okay, another tough question. It's not tough, it's just as a musician. I know it's hard to pick favorites and narrow things down because there's so many great people out there. It's mm -hmm. just, who would you love, like, who's your dream to work with and meet? Um, I, I've met most of my dreams of meeting people. Uh, on your bucket list of musicians, who haven't you met? Robert Plant. If I have no clue who that is. Led Zeppelin. <laughs> I feel so stupid. No, 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 no. You're just young. Uh, uh, You're just young. Oh, my God. That's embarrassing. And I would like him to explain to me why they're not. About uh, ten people just turned off the TV because I just did that. I guarantee you. <laughs> I mean that the band just played a Zeppelin too. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. That's just embarrassing. Okay. Advice time. As a young singer, me, being 15 years old, which isn't young, but it's in their tween kind of age. What would you give me as advice going on? Um, honestly, and uh, I think it's something that a, lo a lot of younger people really don't get, is um, for two things. Passion is, is something I don't see a lot. How can you play music without passion? Well, watch a lot of shows and you'll see it. <laughs> they sing it. well, they sing well, yeah. but they don't sing with passion. You want to see passion, watch Janis Joplin, watch Joe Cocker, Watch some of the old you blues guys. You want to see veins hanging out. You want to you want to know that they're with you. And 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 another big thing I think is a massive thing is phrasing. phrasing. I think phrasing is um, like Aretha. You know, it's cool. it's you know you mean, I mean if you you know you mean diction and no you know how like you listen to Robert uh, Robert Plant he, he cuts words or any of them they all cut words they phrase differently. If you go if you go sing a song just straight out word by word exactly. there's no passion in it if you don't make it your own yes yeah. different than and the that's original. the thing and that's the other thing I would I would recommend to any young person is make yourself get out of the loop and be different, different. than the rest at least find some kind of niche and first of all find your find your your voice it's it's a hard it's thing scary to, to break out it's a hard thing to you actually like find everyone. your voice I remember I found mine in st. Petersburg Florida in a blues club when I, they just made me get up and 
these were like it was filled with musical? these famous musicians and they, and I, and all of a sudden I said this, this voice came out of me and I was like and it just it just evolved from that but uh, find your voice the passion has to be there and the phrasing I think phrasing is so um, something that really isn't taught a lot nope. phrasing is so so important because how can you make a career out of trying to be someone else well, I mean, they don't, you know, they're, they're not looking you, for replicas. You watch, you watch any of these shows, you can listen vocally. They're, they're excellent vocalists. But it's like watching a mannequin sing. There's no passion. There's no, I'm, not, I'm not on the trip with them. You know, you I know was classically I mean? trained for a while before I went into pop music and blues and jazz and all that. And you see how controlled everything is mm -hmm. and how they don't like to move away right, from being right, perfect. Right. And it just wasn't for me. It's I, I don't want to stick to the book about every single thing I do. Absolutely. And it's hard to transition from being classically trained to unteach yourself all those things that were taught to be right and strict right. and all that. But if it was my advice, I'd just say take a chance and do what you love. Step out of the step out. Don't don't be afraid to step out and find something that you know is that it, it makes you different from the rest of the people. And to close it out, my favorite question is. Why did you join Madhouse? I didn't join. Or found it. Or, <laughs> or like, uh, I, I'm not sure. Created. Um, how it happened how was. How it happened, yeah. How it happened was we did a, uh, a, a big uh, thing on against bullying on Long Island. Okay. And it was in six different venues, uh, probably about 80 bands, I don't know. Okay. And um, it just happened that Tom and Vicky picked the venue that I was headlining that night. And they came and they interviewed me. And um, one thing led to another. Uh, Tom said, "You know, I like the way you were on camera. You know, one, would you come on a on a show?" I didn't. I never. I didn't yeah. know what it was. And I went down, and we did the show, and it was fun, and we had a good time. We had a lot of laughs. And uh, then his co-host L.J. two weeks later was out in the field doing a, whatever he was doing. And so okay. Tom asked me to be his co-host. And then just, um, everything and then in, you know I started bringing thing. some of my name people in there and. Uh, it kind of exploded, and then we worked together for a few months, and then uh, we you know. we <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> we decided to uh, build three different studios in in uh, in ten months. So well, here I'm we glad are. You did because now look at us. We're here, here we are. Here we are. And it's and 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 the best part about it is keeping the music alive. That's what we live for. And and there's nothing better for me to see these young mm -hmm. guys doing what has to be continued. Yeah, exactly. It's a great thing, and uh, you know, we just went to Canada. We did the biggest blues fest in North America, and I mean, you know, you want to, you want to see people with some feeling. You watch those old <laughs> blues guys, no. man. I'm telling you something. They leave it on the stage. They, it's there, just yeah. just a puddle there, and, <laughs> and it's just gone. It's oh just, they're God. amazing. They're amazing. I can imagine. Uh, there's this guy, uh, Bobby Rush. It's just. Bobby. 81 years. Did you, did, you, did you interview Bobby Rush? Yes, I did. Did you ever? Hear Bobby Rush does that thing where he goes. Bobby Rush doesn't like to. Bobby Rush doesn't like to drink before he goes on stage. Bobby Rush, he always talks about. He talks to some. Well, very the third Vicky can tell you. It's he crazy. gave me a sit down before the interview, and it was it was pretty. Uh, He's funny though. What He's do you know about me. What do you <laughs> yes, know about me? <laughs> what do you know about me? <laughs> and I was like, what do you know Thank about God Bobby I knew Rush? about him. And then he goes, Okay, now we're brothers. Now we can go. <laughs> but he did. He did. He did say, you know, like, who's your three? And then he goes, BB well, King never did what I did. Little Richard never did what I did. Uh, you know, he went on and on, and he goes, "You know that man made 343 albums, and he's still at 81 doing 240 shows a, a year. It, it's uh, he's amazing. And then went out and played for two and a half hours straight, never stopped dancing. And at the end, at two hours and 15 minutes, did moonwalked across the. At 81, stand. I wish I 81. could do that too. 81. I was standing there filming him, and I couldn't. Even, I was shaking. <laughs> this guy's 81. It was amazing. Amazing, but there's passion. Thank you so much for coming Kill. on it your own pleasure. show. It's, this <laughs> is your, your show at your studio. Thank you for having me. We're just my working for studio. you tonight. Thank you so much. I appreciate it's a pleasure. It. Always, it's a, always pleasure, a pleasure, Katie. And so, my man Sly. We're gonna cut out with the band, and we'll be right back. Where you're gonna interview Sydney? Yep. Ask Sly. <laughs> Okay.
Ireland's best locksmith and hardware. We have three of the largest showrooms of safes on display and in stock. You can see and touch them in person instead of browsing a catalog. We carry gun and rifle safes, burglary safes, jewelry safes, fire rated from a half hour to two hour. Famous name brands. We sell guard all. We sell AMSAC. The new AMSAC touchscreen. If you're ever in need of a safe, think Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. Right, Lockie? That's right, Alan. Hi, my name is Dr. Tom Dow. We have a multidiscipline practice in Melville and we're in Cochrane, New York. And we treat patients with many, many different conditions, from newborns through geriatric patients with numerous different techniques. Uh, there's a technique and a, a type of treatment for every class of patient. We have them all here. Here's my son Thomas, also a doctor of chiropractic, working on one of our patient's cervical spine. This patient has had chronic neck pain for many, many, many years, has been to a multitude of different practitioners with little or no response. And with our specialized techniques, she has improved tremendously and continues to improve on a daily basis. Uh, we have two practices, one in Melville and one in Ronkonkoma, New York. We are a multidiscipline um, chiropractic office. Uh, what that means is we have chiropractors, massage therapists, acupuncturists, psychologists, um, all working as a team and a network of outside professionals such as orthopedists and neurologists uh, that we work hand in hand with to help determine what your injuries are and the best way to uh, treat your injuries. Um, I have the great pleasure of having my son in practice with me uh, we work hand in hand, father and son, to give our patients the best care possible um, and a staff which is loving, caring, um, and you'll never have to wait at all in our office for service. Many times patients come into our office and they have what's called a soft tissue injury. Soft tissue injuries are like scars inside your body. If you've ever been cut on the outside of your body, you get a scar. The same thing happens inside of your body to your muscles and ligaments. So our job is to determine where those are, stretch the muscles, adjust the vertebra back into their correct position, and then refortify the normal structure with um, exercise. That's what we do best, and I hope someday you'll come see us at one of our two offices. Thank you. I am Tom Mealy for the Harrison Law Group, and I have been telling you for years that getting involved in an automobile accident is no joke. This is what we do. We're not new at this game. If you've been involved in an accident of any kind, and you go to a law firm that says you have no case, it's simple. It's because they can't do it, and they don't get it. You need to call us directly at 1-800-INJURY-LAW.
I'm Erica Conway and you're watching MadhouseTV.com. Hey guys, welcome back. Sly here in the Ask Sly section of the thing. I get um, questions fielded to me. I, sometimes we're going to do musical things where we talk about theory or talk about playing or musicianship and that kind of thing. What I want you to do, if you like us at Rock and R and R U on Facebook, look up Rock and Roll University on Facebook. Like us, you can send us questions, that kind of thing. Uh, or you can send it to Madhouse TV at AOL.com and give us questions. We'd love to answer. I got a bunch this week's not um, particularly a, a playing situation that I want to talk about. What I want to talk to you about is never let anybody take away your light. And this is what I want to, I wanted to, people are going to hate you in life for the stupidest reasons. They're going to hate you because your nose is big, because you're fat, or they're going to light, they're going to hate you because your hair is red, because you wear piercings, or whatever it is. Stupidest things that have nothing to do with you. Nine times out of ten, when a person dislikes you for no reason, it's about them. And so you shouldn't take it hard. I, the best way that I can explain it is, is, is this. It was told to me a story. You guys know fireflies, right? They don't, they don't fly very far. They kind of like, they fly about a couple feet, their butts light up, and then they land. And they get up and they fly again, and their butts light up, and then they land. So they don't go very, very far. So there's this firefly, and this firefly is doing its thing, and this lion comes up on it and starts chasing it. And the firefly is like, why is this thing, his butt's lighting up, he's trying to get, and this goes on, and, he, and he's trying to get away from this, this, this lion, the lion just keeps going after him, endlessly. So this goes on for about an hour. So finally the firefly gets tired, and he says, enough of this. He turns to the lion, and he says, why me? You're the most mightiest thing in the jungle. You can eat, you know, anything. You, I'm hardly a meal. Why would you want me? You can, you know, you can eat a monkey. You can eat whatever. A giraffe. You could take down whatever. You're a strong, powerful beast. Why me? Lion looked at the firefly and said, because I hate your light. That's the bottom line, man. People hate you for stupid reasons. All you can do is keep on doing what you do and have faith in yourself. Nobody makes it alone. You build your little circle of people that are gonna help you. Like here at Madhouse TV, teaming up with Kate's and myself and, and, and Rock and Roll University, we are creating a circle, you know, the circle of trust. Man, we're, we're creating, you know, we're creating, you know, networking. So you, you hang with the people that are gonna help you that you can help. That's it, right there. If you really want your dreams to come true, link it up with other people. Help somebody else's dream come true. That's the surest way to make, make a difference. And it's guaranteed because karma is absolute. What you put into life is what you're going to get out of it. If you put jealousy and anger and that kind of thing, that's exactly what you're going to get back. So if you get out there and you say, you know, I want to get my people, my friends, my folks, I'm going to try to help their dreams come true, and they're going to help you. It becomes a circular thing. So listen, keep the faith, do what you got to do, and be positive. Help people. You, God gave you a gift. Use that gift to, to help other people. Because you're, you're, what you do musically, acting, whatever you do in life is meant to bring joy. And as long as you keep that in mind, that's what's going to happen. So... Enough of that. I don't mean to preach at you, but no, I'm just trying to give you that. But what we have here, we have uh, Sidney Shazano is one of uh, our seniors leaving Rock and Roll University to go on to bigger, better things such as college up in the woods, way up in Albany. So before she goes, we're going to bring her out and we're going to talk a little bit about her because she is quite the aspiring songwriter and singer. So Sydney, why don't you come on up? Ah, oh, okay, you're all set. How you doing? Good to good. see you. Good to see you. Ooh, How are you doing? Yeah, long time. I liked your little lion thing you did 
that. You like that, right? That was good. I, yeah, I like you know, that. I wrote that. I wrote, I wrote yeah, it down. Yeah, yeah, so you like that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so listen. So let me turn over here because I, I want to see you better. Got my good side. Does this make me look fat? Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, so talk to me. So you, when did you start singing? Um, I started singing when I was like six. Um, you know, I kind of fell into it with my, um, my sister and my cousin, and we used to sing for my uncle's, actually like his TV show thing. Oh, you're used we to used to, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we did it back in the day. It was like from when I was like six to eight. We used to sing in the studio for him and his, his show that he did. And it was like a little, little kid show and stuff. So I would, that's where I like, you know, I learned my basis of singing. I learned harmonies there, and that's really how it began. Yeah. It's amazing. So what about now? So fast forward now. You're in a, you're in like a mm. Indigo Girls kind of yeah, yeah. duo acoustic-y, singy thing. <laughs> you right? can, yeah, that's, that's singy perfect. Thing. That's exactly. It. Singy thing. Yeah. Um, I'm in, yes, I'm in a singing duet with my, my friend Lexi. Mm. Um, we're an acoustic group. We do um, uh, classic pop songs, you know. We do some, a little bit of old stuff, and we, we turn it into an acoustic kind of vibe thing. Mm -hmm. We also write our own songs, and, you know, we kind of write together. We'll write separately, and we'll come together and make the song our own, or we'll take a cover, and we'll make it more acoustic and mm -hmm. more, more fun. So now you, you guys did a video. Like, yeah. I, I got to see the video. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, this is like a high-end production, you guys. Like, what did it cost you? Like, oh, nothing. Like $25, Actually, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. No, we, no, it looked really good. Yeah, my cousin. My cousin actually filmed it and edited it, and uh, she's awesome. And, um, you know, my uncle recorded our song mm -hmm. and recorded our demo, four songs. And so we d we took the our favorite, which gave me more, that's what it's called, and... Um, you know, we decided to do it really, really, for lack of a better word, ratchetly. And <laughs> Ratchet. we, we went to my sister's college, Adelphi University, and out in the freezing cold weather, it was literally like four degrees outside, and we had to stay outside and record this whole video. But yeah, it ended up turning a lot out a lot better than I than what was expected. It looked really good, <laughs> you know. And I think that we even have a clip. We're going to show a clip of this. We. We're going to roll this clip, so let's watch a little bit of this. Let's see uh, this uh, Steven Spielberg production yeah. that you have it's here. It's pretty legit it's for, right. so for the I'm, circumstances. I was pretty impressed. It's, it's pretty better than me with my <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> that was our first option. Okay. So. <laughs>
Hey folks, welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together at home for Miss Sydney Shazano. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say Well, sunshine, she's here and you can take a break I'm a hot air balloon and I can go to space With the air like I don't care, baby, by the way Because I am glad along if you feel like a room without a roof Along if you feel like happiness is the truth Clap along if you know what happiness is to you Clap along if you feel like that's what you want to do Here come bad news talking this and that Now give me all your cat and I will hold it back Yeah, yeah, well I should probably want No offense to you, don't waste your time Here's my because I'm Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof Clap along if you feel like happiness is the truth Clap along if you know what happiness is to you Clap along if you feel like that's what you want don't bring me down, can I? Bring me down, say my love is too high. I bring me down, can I? Bring me down, let me tell you now. Bring me down, can I? Bring me down, say my love is too high. Bring me down, you cannot. Bring me My love is too high, bring me down, you cannot bring me down. Come back and visit us sometime. Okay, so folks, I'm honored to have my co-host come up here and do a little bit with the house band. Put your hands together for Miss Katie Zimmer.
Zimmer. And let me introduce you to the band over here. Let me put you, introduce Mr. Nichols Santori over there on the double neck guitar. Mr. Robert Rippey over here on the bass. Mr. Sean Cortese on the guitar. And over here my man Mozart, Nicholas Barone on keyboards. And, I, and once again, Miss Diana DeRose on the drums. And Kate's, these guys are going to be in Patchogue tomorrow night, 5 o'clock, live at 5, 70 Main Street, right there, it, amongst all the food and all the, the vendors and all the music. It's going to be a beautiful thing, folks. So make sure you come down. Kate, you're going <laughs> to... <laughs> anyway, so Kate, you're going to you're going to do something with Tommy again, right? We will be. I think we're cutting to commercial, correct? No, no, we're going straight. We're going it. straight. Yep. Um, I'm gonna be singing a song with Tommy Marr, who I just interviewed earlier. We're doing House of the Rising Sun, so let's just let's, let's do, do that. it. Yes. Okay. Band, look natural. <laughs> huh? Check it. Check. You ready, girl? As I'll ever be. I am Tom Mealy for the Harrison Law Group, and I have been telling you for years that getting involved in an automobile accident is no joke. This is what we do. We're not new at this game. If you've been involved in an accident of any kind, and you go to a law firm that says you have no case, it's simple. It's because they can't do it, and they don't get it. You need to call us directly at 1-800-INJURY-LAW. Maestro, let the band play on. Oh, 